Did you know that there are over 1,200 species of bats? It's true, and today we're going to make one of our very own. This is Michelle with Moonlight Makes, and I am so excited that you have joined us for this craft tutorial. I am so excited to be making bats with you today. The first thing that I wanted to do was introduce you to everything that you have in your special bat kit. The first is this orange and green wool. We'll need that later. That's just for making a pumpkin. The second thing is some felting foam. This is just a, some foam that we're going to use to stab into. You're going to have some black wool, some brown wool, two uh, Chanel sticks or pipe cleaners, two felting needles. We'll have a large one and a small one. They'll be useful for different things. So your bat wings, your ears and eyes. We'll put those away. We'll use those in a little bit. And a couple of stickers just for fun. Now, the first thing that I'm really excited to do is we're going to start with our bat wings. So we're going to put our felting needle right over here and we're going to start with our pipe cleaners. And what we're going to do is we're going to wrap our pipe cleaners with some black wool. So when we open our black or our container of wool, you'll notice that it comes in about a one inch long strand. We're going to take away a piece that's maybe the size of like a piece of thread or a pencil almost. And what we're going to do is we're going to start on one end of the pipe cleaner and we're going to just gently but tightly wrap the wool around the pipe cleaner. Now this doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to wind up covering it up, but that wool will make a nice border along our bat wings. So notice how I'm just twisting this wool as I kind of pull it down. It's almost like spinning yarn. Now your first job is to do this with both pipe cleaners. And when you get to the end, you're just gonna continue to twist just a little bit. So that it stays on the pipe cleaner. See how nice and twisted that is? I'm gonna do the second pipe cleaner. And just leave that like that. Now that I have my wool twisted on my pipe cleaner, I'm gonna start on one end of my bat wing and I'm just gonna add it along the outside, just so that I can get a feeling about what the shape is gonna look like. And then I'm gonna do pretty much the same thing on the other side, except what I'm gonna do is especially over here, I will absolutely leave some of the pipe cleaner out and then I'm gonna twist it around kind of that back ledge so that I can get a feeling about how this is gonna be. We're gonna have more pipe cleaner than we need, so don't even worry about that. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some of my black wool and I'm gonna start needle felting each wing. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my needles. Now, there are two size needles in your packet. One is bigger than the other and the large one will be used for doing a lot of the big work. We'll do that in a little bit. The smaller one is gonna be for some of the detail work. And this is kind of some detail work that I'm talking about. So I'm gonna pull my bat wing around and I'm just gonna start by poking it in just a little bit, just to get a feeling for where I'm going. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some wool and I'm gonna use this as kind of a, um, I'm just gonna felt the wool over and around my pipe cleaner, being delicate and careful as I go, because I don't wanna break my needle by stabbing the pipe cleaner. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go all the way around the outside of this particular wing until it's nice and belted in. You can also try using a larger needle. The larger needle will kind of push more felt in at the same time. And so especially a lot better for especially when you begin. And 
And what this is doing is this is literally pushing the fibers together. So it's basically marrying the felt with the wool and holding that pipe cleaner nice and securely. The more that you poke it in, the more you stab, the more your wing is going to be situated. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the same thing right on with the second part of my wing. So I'm just gonna use my needle felting tool to stab and kind of work around and make this nice and firmly a part of this. Now I will have extra felt. That's not something to worry about. We're gonna trim that later. So right now I'm using my large needle and finding that that is absolutely working best for me. Once I have this on, I'm gonna pick it up and you'll notice that it's gonna make it a little bit furry in the back. We'll add some more felt in a little while. And then I'm gonna just start working on the other side to get this roughly placed on. I can be a little bit more detailed in a little while, but right now I like to just start by getting my wings nice and securely fastened. You can spend ages on the wings if you like, or not so much. Here, I'll use a little bit of that. I'm just gonna go all of the way around both of my wings. Again, I'll snip the wool in just a little while, so not to worry if it's a little bit crazy. Another thing that you can do, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kinda keep my bat wings free of a lot of fur, but what you could do if you wanted more fur is to just add wool right in this section. And notice I was felting and I missed the point of the wing. So I'm just gonna come back and fix that. There are no mistakes, just happy accidents. These are very forgiving little creatures. Now my bat wing is looking nice and secure. What I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna take a pair of scissors and I'm just gonna snip the edges of this wing off. And I'm gonna shape the wing to my preference. So what I'll do here is I'm gonna, once I've snipped the wing, I'm gonna kind of twist this wool and tease it into little points. Actually, this one I want more And You can continue to shape this as long as you like. You can also snip anywhere you want the wool to go. And when you have the wings nice and where you want, you can then just clean it up. To get the back or bat wings in a place where you are just happy. All right, now that we have our little bat wings, we're gonna put them off to the side, happy with that. Now we're gonna take our wool and we're gonna need about half of what we've got. So I'm gonna take about this much, I'm gonna fold it in half and we're gonna make our bat's body. So I'm gonna fold it in half again and this will just make my life a little bit easier. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna roll my bat body just like this and then I will tuck it in and this is when we wanna use our large needle. Because what we're gonna do is we're gonna literally use our sh er, belt to make the bat body. So I'm gonna stab up and down and twist and stab up and down and twist. 
and stab up and down. I'll also stab the top. And I'm gonna spend at least five minutes just working on this body and twisting it and stabbing it. And what that's doing is that's pushing the fibers in together and it's kind of like teasing your hair. This is literally what felting is. We're just gonna sculpt with our wool until we have a body that we're really happy with. So this guy is far too, well, actually that's not far too long. It's a little bit too long for my bat. So what I'll do is I'm gonna stab both the top and around the sides until I create a shape that I'm really happy with. And every time you stab this wool, what you're literally doing is taking little pieces of fiber and pushing it in and shaping it. So I'm just gonna stab and twist and stab and twist until I'm super happy with my shape. If you have things sticking out, don't even worry about it. Just stab them right on back in. That is par for the course. Be very careful with your fingers. I do have to say that needle felting needles are incredibly painful when you stab yourself. To me, they feel like getting a bee sting. Some people work with leather gloves or with protectors. We're making fruit bats, not vampire bats, so we don't want to give them blood. So be careful with your your needle. Now, once you are happy with the shape of your bat body, we're gonna put it aside and we're gonna take some more wool. Now this, we're gonna probably need about three quarters of the wool left over. So we're probably gonna need about this much. Actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna lie, I'm gonna take that in half. So maybe the size of a large pencil. And then I'm going to fold it in half again and again, and we're going to do the exact same thing we did with our body, but instead of making an oval, we're going to make a circle this time. So we're going to roll it up, stab a little bit. We're going to bring everything in, stab, and roll it up, because this is going to be our bat's head. So we're going to start with a, a round spear, and we're going to stab and stab and stab. And this is one of those things where it just takes a little bit of patience. It always seems like there's no way that this wool is going to come into a ball, but it always does. And we're just going to rotate and stab and rotate and stab until we get a nice ball. One thing that's also very useful is if you pinch the ball as you stab, it helps the fibers come together and then we'll bring it over here and rotate and just stab. Plan on sta or stabbing for a minimum of five minutes. This takes a little bit of time. And if you need to, you can push the wool off of your foam. Stab until we are happy with our little ball. That's coming together. Now, if this gets too hard, you can absolutely pull your smaller felting needle. Just to rotate between the felting needles until you're just comfortable. Now, I have my little ball. He goes on my bat head, but bats, well, they needed noses. So what we're gonna do now is take a little bit more of our roving wool. We're gonna take maybe this much and we're gonna basically turn it into a ball. So one easy way of doing that is just physically turning it into a ball. And actually this is gonna be way too much, I can tell. Because our bet's not gonna have a huge nose, just a little nose. And we're gonna use our small needle and give it a nice stab. And turn it into something that's about the size of a small pea. Then we'll put it on the bat's face Whoops. And we'll needle it in and we'll just use our felting needle to make a nice bat face. So I'm gonna, sometimes it really, like one fast shortcut is just to roll your wool with your hands, kind of like a piece of clay. Helps it get into the shape that you want. Once we're happy with our little base, we're gonna decide where our nose is gonna go. I'm gonna put it right there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna 
take my needle and I'm not gonna stab my thumb like I just did. And I'm just gonna take my small needle and stab so that the bat's nose becomes almost like a teardrop. And the more I needle it, the more I stab it and tease it, the more it becomes smooth and beautiful. What we can also do is add just a nice little layer of wool when we're feeling done to this to make it a little bit more smooth and cover up some of the seam that we just did. So I'm just gonna go around and around until I'm happy, but I'm not gonna stab my thumb. This is where I get in trouble when I'm working on the bat face. Until I'm just happy with the shape of the bat. Now he looks like a bear to me right now. So I'm gonna push this up so that he has a pointy nose. Did you know that bats can live up to 30 years? They are very long-lived mammals. They are the smallest mammal in the world and a mid-size, or at least a species of bat is one of the small or is the smallest mammal in the world. The bumblebee bat measures in at an inch and a half, but bats can also be quite large. There's a species of bat that has a wingspan that is four feet long. So bats are hugely interesting. They've got a lot of different species, a lot of different things going for them. All right, so I am happy with my little bat's face. And what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna add his ears. Now, you can either have your ears be brown or you can have black bat ears, totally up to you. I'm gonna choose black this time. These are the little eyes, we'll need them in a minute. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay the bat ears where I want them facing forward and kind of hold them on so that I can decide exactly how my bat face is gonna be. Now I can absolutely adjust this as much as I want, but I'm gonna hold it on so that my bat is happy. And then I'm just gonna take my little needle and I'm gonna needle it in place along the bat or the back. That way I have two identical ears, sort of. Nothing's identical, identical, but this helps me get them on straight. To kind of hold them on and just slowly needle them. And then I'm gonna put them back on my thing. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna continue to, to poke these ears until they're nice and firmly in place in the back and so that it looks like they're part of the felt. Once I've got that, I'm gonna bring my ears up by literally stabbing through the front of the ears, just like this. So I'm gonna bring this little ear up and give it a nice go. Now, what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna add a little bit of brown so that I can define where the eyes are. Otherwise the eyes are gonna kind of fall or be hidden in this little bat's face and we won't really see them. So I'm gonna take just a touch of brown and you'll notice it's, it's not much. And I'm gonna turn it into a little ball and I'm actually gonna do two of these so that they are as close as I possibly can get them. And I'm, I'm gonna take my fingers and just turn them into two little balls, just like this. And I'm gonna try to get them as close to being the same as possible. I feel like I got this just about right the first time, although sometimes it takes a little while. It's okay to add or take away felt if you need. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place the brown wool where I want my eyes to go. And what that'll do is that'll just outline the little eyes that we're gonna use so that you'll be able to kind of see them a little bit better. It also really helps place them because it's very easy to get lopsided eyes. And this just makes it so that you kind of know where you're aiming. If you get lopsided eyes, don't worry about it. We can always pull them out and re-side them. In fact, I'll probably have to do that. The beautiful thing about needle felting is it's just so super forgiving. Now I'm liking these eyes. They're not quite perfect, but they're pretty close. And what you can do is, especially if you take the larger needle, you can kind of almost brush the wool where you want it. We want to be gentle with our needle because they will break, but you can just kind of 
gently move them into the center of your bat. All right, I'm loving this little bat space. I'm gonna get the eyes in. The way that I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna take my large belting needle, although you could take your small one, and I'm gonna decide where I want to place my eyes. And then I'm going to take my needle and I'm gonna twist it in all the way as far as I can go. So see, that's gonna go right about there. And then I'm gonna take my eye, which is kind of a pin, and I'm gonna put it in right where my needle was. There we go. Now I'm gonna do the same thing on the other eye. And now I have two little bat eyes. The one thing my little bat is missing is a little tiny nose. So I'm gonna take the smallest bit of wool that I possibly can and I'm gonna twist it around or roll it into a tiny little ball. And because my face is pretty well packed, I'm gonna take the small needle and I'm gonna put this in and just stab it until I feel like it's a good nose. Oh, I'm loving this little bat's face. What I can also do if I'm feeling adventurous is take a touch of brown and I can add a little bit of ear hair because what bat doesn't need a little bit of ear hair. That way it's just a little bit fluffy. Kind of defines that ear. If you don't want this or if you want it to be black, you absolutely can. Each bat has its own little personality. So I'm just folding this in, adding a little ear hair, poking it on down. This also helps secure the ears. So nothing wrong with some ear hair. Now, check it out. I have most of what I need to create a nice bat. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my head and my body and I'm gonna attach them. And the way that I'm gonna do that is I'm just gonna stab them together. I'm also gonna take just a touch bit of wool, kind of wrap it around so that he has a little neck scarf. And I'm gonna take my large needle and just poke everything in place. And I'm gonna go all the way around my bat head. And I'm gonna go both up and down. That way the fibers really mesh and we don't lose a bat head. Cause that would be really sad. Cause this bat head is especially cute. We want nothing to happen to our beautiful bat head. Now, once my head is attached, I'm gonna fix that little ear here. It looks like you missed. That's the beautiful thing about needle felting. You can always fix things. Now I've got my little body attached to my bat. And the way that I'm gonna attach him to his wings is I'm gonna take my large needle and I'm gonna attach him from the front, but I will also attach him from the back. So I'm gonna take his little back and I'm just gonna poke him in the back. I'm not gonna feel bad for stabbing my back or bat in the back. He likes it and it will make sure that his wings don't fly off. Give him just a couple more stabs in the front. Make sure that the head is nice and attached. And now, My bet is all complete. Now that my bet is nice and complete, 
he has told me that he would very much like a pumpkin. And so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my orange wool and my pumpkin pack, and I've got my green and my orange right here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my orange wool and do the exact same thing that I did with my bat's head, but I'm gonna, er, and I'm gonna make a round, loose ball. So I'll take my large needle and give it a nice stab. Now this particular pump, or this particular part of the project, whereas with the bat, we made our, um, I'm actually gonna move, switch over to the small needle because that just feels better to me. The nice thing about having two different kinds of needles is that they actually work in different ways, different kinds of wool. So I'm just gonna use my small needle and I'm gonna make my round orange ball, but I'm gonna keep it fairly loose so that we can turn it into the shape of a pumpkin. Now, you'll notice I've got it fairly, fairly loosely needle felted all the way around. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna give it some extra poking right in the center. So that I can bring it into a pumpkin shape. And then I'll do the very same thing on the bottom. You can also try the large needle if you get impatient. I freely switch between the large needle and the small needle. Now I have a fairly nice pumpkin shape, but the only problem is I don't have the divots that are very common with a pumpkin. So what I'm gonna do is I'm literally just gonna go up and down the sides and I'm gonna poke around and I'm gonna make divots right up and down the sides, just like this. I'm gonna go all the way around the pumpkin, making these fun little divots. That way, this looks like a real pumpkin. I'm gonna be careful with my fingers, because again, these needles are sharp. You can go around making your pumpkin as perfect or imperfect as you like. The more time you spend, the more tightly woven your pumpkin is going to be. And the more sturdy and secure it's going to be. Once you have your pumpkin shape, you're gonna take your green wool and you're gonna decide how much of a stem you'd like. So I'm gonna fold it over and I'm just gonna twist it around and then I'll fold it again and twist it so that it feels roughly like the shape of a stem. So I'll give it a little twist like that. And then I'll take my small needle and just stab it all the way around. Oh, lost the pumpkin. That's all right. You ha I have more, way more green than I need, but if I wanted to have a crazy, crazy stem, I could. And I'm just gonna felt this until it's about the shape that I'd like it to be, to go on top of my pumpkin. Absolutely tuck that down so that your pumpkin stem doesn't have any sort of point and it looks like it was just cut from the vine. This is gonna be the top of my pumpkin stem. And I'm just gonna go around until I'm happy with the shape. And when I'm happy with the shape, I'm gonna add it to my pumpkin. Just attach that top, top stem with the rest of the pumpkin.
I'm excited to see everybody's pumpkins because I think that they're all going to be very, very different shapes, just like in the real world. This particular pumpkin that I just made has a crazy, crazy top. If I wanted to, and I do, I could take my scissors and give it a little snip and check it out. Here you go, bat. Here's a pumpkin. Now that I've completed my bat, I am super, super excited to see yours. Thank you so, so much for joining us today. And I hope you tag us at Moonlight Makes with your bats. I cannot wait to see your bats and your pumpkins. And I will see you next time. Happy autumn.